Bluff Gaming here with a quick tutorial about how to sail a ship in Atlas if you have a rudder. Bluff Gaming here with a quick tutorial about sailing ships with rudders in the game Atlas. Unlike the raft, which will turn in whatever direction you turn the sail, the sails actually have no bearing on which way your ship travels or turns. The rudder itself is what determines the direction that the ship travels. The sails only determine the speed. I'm currently in a sloop with the anchor down, so before we set sail, let's bring up the anchor by facing the deck, holding E, and raising anchor. Once you've done that, you can use the steering wheel to turn left or right, even in the absence of wind. However, these vehicles turn very slowly using the rudder, so it does take a bit of time. Once you're facing the direction you want to go, so long as the wind isn't going directly opposite you, you should be able to get at least a little bit of velocity. You can see in the diagram up here that we have a wind vector showing the direction and strength of the wind, as well as two sail icons, one for each sail, and you'll have more of these if you have more sails. If they're red, they're not giving you any velocity. If they're green, they are. The more aligned they are with the wind vector, the more velocity they'll give you, as well as the normal opening of the sail giving you more velocity. Obviously, 100% open gives you more than 10%. You can interact with the sails like normal to rotate them whatever direction you want them to be. And of course, do the same to open the sails. You can't control the sails from your steering wheel unless the sail is very close, then you can leave the steering wheel interaction and interact directly with the sail. Or if you have some crew hired that are controlling the sails. You steer using the rudder, but keep in mind that the sails will go out of alignment if you're not adjusting them as you steer with the rudder. The more sails you have, the harder it is to control a ship by yourself, so you'll want to bring some friends or, as I said earlier, hire some crew. Whenever you're done with your voyage, you can of course anchor again, but you have to be in quite shallow land in order for the anchor to reach the bottom. That's your bottom line up front. If you'd like to see more details on how the different sail types work and how to hire and utilize crew on your ship, just stick around for the rest of the details. Thanks for sticking around. Before we set sail again, let's take a look at just how these different sails work. As you can see, my front sail is different than my rear sail. I have a handling sail in front and a speed sail in back. Let's close both of these sails and then adjust their angles so we can see what the difference really is. Right now, they're both red. So let's turn this handling sail until it actually stops being red so that if we were to open it, it could allow us to have some velocity. We see we get that at 15 degrees. Let's adjust this speed sail to the same direction. And you see over here the speed sail is still red, whereas the handling sail does give you some velocity. That's the difference in these sails. Speed sails will, as the name suggests, give you more speed. The handling sails enable you to get velocity in situations where you wouldn't be able to otherwise. So if you like to travel against the wind, a handling sail is for you. However, if you're not as concerned about the direction and you just want to get as much velocity as possible, go for the speed sails. I like to do one of each for versatility, but you may have your own purposes for ships that require two of one or the other. There's also a weight sail out there, which as the name suggests, allows you to carry more weight. However, for the purposes of sailing, we're not going to cover that. As I said in my sloop building tutorial, you can put a sail close to the wheel so that while you're at the steering wheel, you can also interact with the sail just by leaving the steering wheel interface and adjusting your sail for whatever you need to do. That's very handy for sailing as one person alone on a multi-masted ship. However, you may find yourself wanting to have more than one sail, in which case, if you don't have any friends with you, you're going to need some crew. You can either talk to the crew directly and tell him to use a nearby sail, or you can go face the sail where you want crew and hit the comma, which will call the nearest crew member to man the sail. As we all know, there's still a few bugs left in this game, maybe a few more than a few, maybe a lot more than a few. However, this does work. The only issue that I've seen so far is that while manning this sail, your crew is hanging on for dear life to the side. 
He doesn't seem too upset though, and he does his job just fine over there. Whenever you're using crew, you can then control the sail that is manned by using your keyboard shortcuts. Just like A and D on the rudder cause your ship to turn left and right very slowly, well, you can now use Shift A and Shift D to turn the sail that's being manned. And you can see in the upper right, I'm turning it left and right, and the closer it gets to the wind, the greener it turns. Continuing to use the WASD control configuration, we can press W to open up any sails that are manned, and we can use S to close them. This makes sailing much easier by yourself and makes going out in a sloop on your own a much more feasible voyage. Now let's go take a look at a free port and look into hiring more crew. Okay, we have a free port in sight. Let's go ahead and dock over there and go find the crew master that we can hire more crew from. Okay, we're just about to dock. Let's pull in nice and close and then drop anchor and let's bring our crew ashore with us just in case we have any trouble. Again, Put down the anchor, just look at the deck, hold E, and click lower anchor. And now the ship won't bounce around or move anymore. This poor guy's been hanging on the side long enough, so let's unseat him, meaning he has no job currently. And while anchored, if he's unseated, he'll start sweeping about and repairing the ship if he can. However, we want to bring him with us so we can go to behavior and tell him to follow us. Just enable following here and if you want to change the range that he follows you at you can change that right here I have it set the lowest so he's gonna be right on me the entire time come on dread Alex let's go see your old boss here we have a crew recruiter and as you can see, you can hire new crew for only five gold. We've now hired Feared Joan the Strong. And if we look at Alex here, we see that he takes one gold coin every 1.7 hours. We can also access his inventory. You need to put the gold in their inventory so that whenever that 1.7 hour timer finishes, they'll take their payout of what you've already provided them. Joan here came with a hat, a pair of pants. Alex, however, he's dread because apparently he's a pant thief. He's got his own pants and someone else's. Let's tell Joan to follow us. Looks like she's already following. We don't want to disable following. And she's following from a medium distance. Why don't we go ahead and put her low? Now, let's all get back on the ship and assign them some jobs. From here, we'll tell Alex to take the handling sail, and we'll see if we can get Joan to get the speed sail. Joan's perch is a bit better than Alex's normal perch. I don't see where Alex went to, but I trust Alex enough to know that he's going to be controlling it somewhere, even if he's underneath the ship. Alex is a good sailor. So, let's hoist the anchor. and set sail. Now you see that we can use our capital A and capital D button to control both sails at the same time. And W and S will raise both of the sails at the same time as well. So this doesn't give you quite as granular of control as you would have if you had an individual player at each sail. However, it is a lot more convenient and personally, I find it easier to navigate a ship using crew than players. 
our ship has just gained a level and it's rather convenient time as we need to take a look at accommodation. As you can see, Joan wants one gold every 1.7 hours, and somewhere the old dread Alex is hiding, wanting about the same. If we go to level up our ship, you can see that accommodations will actually reduce the amount you have to pay your crew. It's not always noticeable, but it does exist. If we take a look at Joan now, it looks like she only wants one gold every 1.8 hours, so she's willing to work a little bit longer for every coin we give her. Oh, I found Dread Alex's perch, and you see he also demands less money. So, let's go back and sail the rest of the way home. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. If it was, please like or comment and let me know. I'll cover crew later in another tutorial as they do have other things that they can do, but in my opinion they are most useful at helping you sail. If you'd like to see more of my videos just hit the subscribe button and of course if you don't like my videos I guess you could hit dislike, but if you do that I'm going to find out where you keep your crew and I'm going to go tell them that your teeth aren't real. No you've got wooden teeth like a poor bad pirate, not even gold teeth, you should be ashamed. That's your bottom line up front. I hope you enjoyed it. See you on the high seas.